And now I would just like to welcome all of those of you who are joining us on social media. May your day be blessed. May this period in your life be blessed. And may this ministry and its message touch your very heart wherever you are, whatever you are doing. Let us pray. Lord God, touch us at the depth of our being that we may feel your words, your thoughts, your deeds flowing in our mind, our heart, our very soul. May we be filled to overflowing with all that we need. May our lives be blessed. The men and women with whom we live and share our life, their lives as well. And may we be a blessing always, wherever we are, so that we can turn any situation in our life that may not always look like a blessing, but carries a blessing in disguise. Help us to see it, own it, honor it, and let it be part of who we are. Amen. And now to really experience another blessing today. How many of you noticed the lady on the far right of the duet? That is our own Reverend Carmen. I bet many of you haven't heard her sing in a while. How many of you haven't heard her sing? Well, she sings, and she plays a guitar. She also sings and dances together at the same time. But today she's going to sing with our lovely musician, Carol. God bless you both. And notice the gentleman behind, Mr. Alec Garrido. <laughs> we have a wonderful group of musicians in this church. I'm very always very happy to see them and to welcome them. God bless you. Thank you. You took my, you took my speech away. I was going to do the same thing, introducing uh, our own associate pastor, Reverend Carmen. <laughs> One more round of applause for yeah. her. She's usually so busy that she doesn't have time to, yeah. to come and it's, out. It's, a, real, it's a, a joy, a tremendous joy to be able to sing with Carol. And uh, we hope that uh, you, it, the song touches your heart. This is an original, one of Carmen's original songs. Some of you may have heard it about three years ago, but the words have been tweaked a little bit. I have rights to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Alex, for joining in as well.
Yes, love is what brings us back together. Love is what keeps us strong. Love is the only reason we're here. This is where we belong. Yes, I am all and you are all. United we live in possibility. For all we are, you and me as we join together in Thank you. We look forward to the next performance, Reverend Carmen and, and Carol. Can we sign you up today? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now, without further ado, I am honored to welcome to our rostrum once again, after a long absence, Reverend Kathy Engelhart, the inimitable Kathy Engelhart. Oh, my goodness. You always set the stage where I have to meet these high expectations, Leroy. Goodness. It is a joy to be here. There's a story about a 65-year-old woman who had a heart attack, and she was taken to the hospital. And while on the operating table, she had a near-death experience. And seeing God, she asked, is my time up? And God said, no. You have another 33 years, two months, and six days to live. Upon recovery, the woman decided to stay in the hospital and have a facelift, liposuction, a tummy tuck. She even had someone come in and color her hair completely different, and she got uh, brightened her teeth while she was recovering. And since she had so much more to live for, right? She thought she might as well make the most of it. Well, after her last operation, she was fully recovered. She's released from the hospital. And while crossing the street on her way home, she gets hit by an ambulance and is killed. Arriving in front of God, she demanded, I thought you said I had another 33 years to live. Why didn't you pull me out of the path from that ambulance? God replied, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> we got to have a little funny in our life, don't we? I always like to start with a little funny. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you know, I'm... And actually, Steve, we can go ahead and show the screen of the book that a lot, no, I'd say quite a bit of my talk is based on this book. And it's actually based on probably just the first four chapters of this book. And it's titled Einstein and the Rabbi. And it is by, the author is Naomi Levy. And she is one of the first women rabbi to graduate from rabbi, rabbi school. Uh, she was one of the first women to be awarded and designated as a rabbi. And in this book, she shares a quote from Einstein. I want you to just take this in and remember this is from Einstein. We are all part of the whole. When we experience ourselves separate from the rest, that separateness is an optical delusion of our consciousness. The purpose of true religion is to free ourselves of this delusion that we are separate. When we recognize we are all a part of the whole, we will have peace of mind. 
Does that sound more like a Zen quote? And it's from Einstein. You know, the purpose of true religion is to free ourselves of this delusion that we are separate. When we recognize we are part of the whole, we will have peace of mind. I've titled this talk, The Narrow Mind and the Expanded Mind. And this actually came out of a title of one of the chapters in the book. And I was so taken by that. And many of you may kind of think where I'm going with that. Because in New Thought circles, uh, we talk about expanding our consciousness, right? Raising our consciousness. And in Naomi, in the Jewish faith, they actually have a saying, only theirs is about the narrow mind and the expanded mind. And Michael actually shared this, this particular next quote I want to give you uh, probably about three weeks ago. He found it on, face, on his Facebook page. And it was, to me, well worth sharing. Unifying, now keep in mind, this would have been three to four weeks ago. Many of you remember what took place about three to four weeks ago at the Capitol. Unifying doesn't necessarily mean that everyone agrees or that we will all be happy campers. It means we will be civil to one another, respectful in our agreements. We'll state our cases, and we may compromise for the good of the whole. Our country has done this over the years, and we can return to it again if we choose to do so. If we choose to do so. I'm going to read that one line again. Unifying doesn't necessarily mean that everyone agrees and that we will all be happy campers. I remember 30 years ago stepping my feet into a New Thought church, and my, my particular uh, church was the Unity of Garden Park back then. Had no idea what I was walking into. But I remember thinking, oh my God, I've known this since I was a kid. I have believed and thought this way since I was a kid. And I thought I had reached a level of nirvana. Anybody ever kind of felt that way. Okay, well, I think I'm just going to share with you a quick story about our board of our church. I served on the board for many years, well before I even realized I was headed to ministerial school. And I still to this day when a congregant will come to me and say that they would like to run for the board. I say to them, if you are willing to say yes to running for the board, then you are saying yes to a fast track of spiritual evolution. And they look at me like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, when, because my experience has been, you get on a board of a new thought type church, you think that it's all going to be, we're all going to be happy campers. And we're all going to get along. And it's all kumbaya. And everything is wonderful, right? That, my friends, is a part of medical, metaphysical malpractice. <laughs> yes, I said it. Oh, yes, there is a slippery slope in our New Thought teachings that we can move to believing that everything is, and this is why some people think we are tend, we're nothing but Pollyannish people, right? Because we always say, oh, everything's good, everything's well, and the board is everything well. Well, no, it's not. Our board has seven people, six people plus myself, and that means seven different opinions, right? Seven very strong viewpoints. Uh, if I understand correctly, you possibly have a painting project in the near future for the exterior of your buildings. 
that takes a lot of compromise, okay? Because I know at our church, we're doing a barn project. We are refurbishing a barn. Well, let me tell you, there is, well, I think this barn should be this way. I think the barn should be that way. We've had it over air conditioning units. I think we should hire that contract. No, we need to hire that contract. And the next thing you know, we're, it's, the, it's now table to the next month. Now it's next table to the next month. Until we can come to a compromise. If we really take the teachings that you hear, and I know that you hear this on a weekly basis, and I love the song, it's no accident you chose and wrote that song about love, because every single week I know that you are hearing the message grounded in love. True? There is some message here, and the grounding or root of that message is about love. And that's why we gravitate to this place. So think about not just our churches, but think about, oh, how many of you live where there's a HOA, right? Uh, homeowners Association. Yes, oh, those wonderful Homeowners Association and the thick books that come with that. Uh, think about our places of work, our families, you know, we all have different opinions. And oh my goodness, the last four years, those opinions have had to get very loud, haven't they? No matter what, what side you, you are on, it would get very loud. Well, our teachings say it's okay to disagree. Do they not? We don't teach that... Oh, whatever you say is correct. No, we teach independent thinking. We teach that it's okay to disagree, and we also teach that we go beyond the disagreement to the spiritual truth of knowing that each and every person that I'm disagreeing with is a perfect child of God. Perfect. We may differ. But we teach to go and find the perfection within each and every one of us. You know, we, and I find this with our board, we make comp compromises for the greater good of the whole, of our whole spiritual community. But then now take it into your own world, not just a church board, but into your own world and what I just asked you to consider, your work, your family, your community that you live in. You know, we, we compromise for the good of our community. We compromise for the good of our country. We compromise for the good of our world. Anybody familiar when I say this name, Edgar Mitchell? Please tell me I'm not the oldest one in this congregation. Edgar Mitchell is an astronaut that uh, is famous for Apollo 14. He is the sixth astronaut to walk on the moon. Edgar Mitchell is, has a, sometimes was very outspoken, and he said that I would love to take every politician by the back of the neck and drag them 14 million miles away from Earth and turn them around and look at what you see. There is a picture, and I wish I could have found it because I would have asked for it to be on the screens. I could not find it, but it never left my mind. Have you had things like that, quotes or pictures? And it could have been 20 years ago that I saw this, but it's never left my mind. And it was a venture of an R combination uh, where we, we took off in space with the Russian cosmonauts. So we did a joint mission. And there was a picture of a Russian cosmonaut and a United States astronaut looking back at Earth. And you see them looking out the window together. And one of them says to the other, from this perspective, how can we see ourselves separate? How can we see ourselves separate? You know, there's this 
Many times I'll, I'll do a meditation at church and I ask people to just visualize themselves raising above this room, raising above St. Petersburg, raising above our continent, raising above our planet, going up into the atmosphere and looking back at our wonderful blue-green planet. And I do that because sometimes we get so narrow-minded that all we can focus on is our little world and our little issues with whatever the case may be. Can anybody relate to that? You know, and Edgar Mitchell even said, here I am in this expanded consciousness looking back at Earth, but as soon as we land, I am back into the world as we know it, and I am having to live in the world as we know it, and it is a struggle to not be in this narrow mind again. So I've really got to step it up here. My goodness, I always have so much to share with you. So this narrow mind and expanded mind, you know, how do we stay out of this narrow mind? Okay, Joyce Meyer, uh, she's a TV evangelist, a minister. She's got many, many books, and she's very famous for her delivery of her talks. She says there are three things, and if you're a note taker, you may want to just jot this down. She says there are three things, and she didn't actually use this to keep out of the narrow mind, but to me, it fits. Three things to help us stay out of the narrow-minded, and that is set your mind and keep your mind on higher things. Catherine Ponder, a unity, well-known unity, older unity author, transition, says see things rightly. See things, focus on things that bring you joy, focus on things that make you happy, focus on affirmations, focus on your friends, focus on someone you love, you know, watch funny movies, meditate. Number two, you know this, do not be transformed of, by things of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, of your mind. Read something positive. Consider unfollowing people who, who post negative things on Facebook. You can do that. Meditate. Oh, did I say meditate? Number three is to clear out the junk. Clear out the junk, not only in your closet, but to clear out the junk in your mind. How many of us still living with past hurts? So I want to succinct what I really want to leave you with about this. And that is, you know, there is a picture, really quick, if we can show that. This is part of the book. And it is drawn by a 10-year-old -year boy in a concentration camp in Auschwitz. Can you see that? It is a picture of a man, and then it's the exact picture inside the man. And it is literally the man inside the man. And uh, the title of it is The Soul and the Body. And I show that for a reason that the soul, we all have a soul. And you probably got that soul when you were first conceived. Now... Here's what I want to leave you with with this soul. And you know what? I can continue a lot of this after the, the, um, during the question and answer period. But I'll tell you something, how I know when I am on track to my expanded mind is you can, whenever you have a decision to make or something's really heavy on your mind and you're not sure which way to go, I'm going to tell you to get in touch with your body because your body, when you get quiet, will listen to your soul. And your soul wants you to be quiet. Because when you think about what you're about to decide, your soul will either feel constricted or your soul will feel expanded. If you feel constricted, I'm going to tell you, think about it. If you feel this way, go for it. So with that, I know I need to close. I have much more I would love to answer question and answer with you afterwards. And there is so much, there is so much, isn't there? 
to the expanded mind. And you have the power. So with that, I close with namaste. Because namaste to me means that the Christ, that soul presence in me, truly sees and honors the soul presence in each and every one of you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Reverend Kathy. You now know why I love going there. You know, she brings as much inspiration to me as she does to her congregation, and I feel fed for a long, long period of time afterward, even though um, we're, we're both doing a very similar work in the world. And we all are doing our own work here in the world. So now today, um, I want to invite uh, Carol and Daniel to perform for us in closing, before which I'm going to offer the tithes and the blessings. So if the ushers will please come forward. Infinite and radiant source of all life, as we ask a blessing on the tithes and offerings to this ministry, may the gifts grow and flourish in our lives and multiply many times over in everyone's life. Thus may that which is given flower in our own life and bring abundance to all beings. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you. May your gifts grow and multiply in this ministry. And afterwards today, um, we'll take a short break, and then Reverend Kathy is going to meet with us, I would say probably here in the chapel, and have a discussion group where you will have a chance to bring some questions to share with the group. God bless you all. Happy day. Happy end of February. And what are we looking at? March. March. So to all our friends out there in the social media world, welcome to you. God bless you. May you have a wonderful, wonderful day and a brand new wonderful month. Carol and Daniel. All right. This is our song of the month. We'll have another song of the month next month. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you remember it because pretty soon we'll all be able to be singing it. Okay, here we go. Just where I'm supposed to be Oh, I'm in the right place At the right time I am just where I'm supposed to be Oh, I'm in the right place At the right time I am just where I'm supposed to be Oh, I'm in the right place At the right time I am just where I'm supposed to be Just while I'm supposed to be I'm in the right place At the right time I am just where I'm supposed to be Oh, my soul is welcome here Oh, my soul is welcome here I am getting the message loud and clear My soul is welcome here Oh, my soul is welcome here Oh, my soul is welcome here 
I am getting the message loud and clear My soul is welcome here I am getting the message loud and clear My soul is welcome here My soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. My soul, my soul is welcome. It's welcome here. My soul is welcome here. My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. My soul is welcome here. Getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. Always welcome at the Temple of the Living God. Happy Sunday, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon.